2018. We're here in Rockford, Illinois, Winnebago County. And uh, this is Concord Commons. It's a public housing project. Well, it's, it's represented as a public housing project in Rockford, Illinois. But it's not really. It's actually owned by a private owner who is the head Democrat in Rockford. Now, as you'll see, this complex is hundreds of units. Okay. These units go from uh, all along here. Now, these, this property is managed by Rockford Housing Authority. Once again, the owner, the top Democrat here in town, was the chairman of Rockford Housing Authority. So not only was he the private owner of a public housing project, he was the top Democrat, he was the uh, owner of the property, and he was the chairman of the company that managed it, which is Rockford Housing Authority. Now if you know how the Democrats work in Illinois, on election day, you'll have vans and school buses lined up out here to take everybody to go vote. Because quite frankly, this is what's in store for the rest of America. Under the UN plan and the New World Order, the plans are to... See, this, this, there, there's, a perfect, there's a perfect example right there of what kind of people you got living here. This is, this is what is planned for the rest of America. You've got just absolute desolation. Look at this, look at this, look at this landscape, all right? This is what America will look like if the New World Order gets their way. And as we've learned, today is February 3rd, as we learned yesterday, the FBI has been complicit with this group of criminals who's been running America for the past, at least since they killed John F. Kennedy. And they pretty much were running things before that. But since then, they've had absolute control of this country. So I've gotten wise to what's going on in America because in 1978, I was lured into a real estate deal in downtown Rockford by the owner of this property, the top Democrat in town. There had been a murder at the property, and it had sat, had sat uh, unable to sell it. It was on the market. They couldn't sell it. And so one of my church friends lured me and my brother into buying it. Well, we found out there was a murder there the year before we bought it, and it looked like that uh, this guy, that the top Democrat that owns this property, he was a top attorney in town too, and an alderman with the city of Rockford. His son is currently the city attorney for the city of Rockford. The guy that owned this property, the top Democrat, was also the campaign manager for the next three mayors. McNamara, John McNamara, 1981 to 1989. Box from 1989 to 1997. And then Doug Scott after that until 2005. So Tom Meyer was the top Democrat here in town. He lured me into a real estate scam downtown for some clients who owned a property where there had been a murder looks like the murder was probably committed by one of the owners of the property and uh, I was lured in to kind of cover the tracks to sign on to the deed. So this Tom Meyer character, he lured me in with a church member in 1978. That church member quit a month after I signed on to the property. Within six months, he had another agent of his who was a good friend of mine from high school. This good friend of mine from high school is named Bruno. His dad worked for How Rockford Housing Authority, for Tom Meyer. This Doug Bruno sent me a letter and promised to take care of the property while I was on my Mormon mission, if I just made him my partner. So I made him my partner. And a couple months later, the city of Rockford condemned my property for no reason after we'd spent about $15,000 on improvements in plumbing and electrical. We went to Tom Meyer and asked him what to do. He said, you can't fight City Hall, even though he was City Hall. 
Well, since then, I learned I better become a journalist and figure out what's going on here in Rockford. And so, since then, I helped start a newspaper called the Rock River Times. And in 25 years, actually in 1996, I worked as a journalist for 25 years. In 1996, we discovered that the cocaine from Little Rock, Arkansas, and the murder of the two boys on the tracks, which the Wall Street Journal called the most famous murder mystery in America, was coming to Rockford, Illinois. The, cur the cocaine courier that witnessed the murder of Kevin Ives and Don Henry in Saline County, where the country road met the railroad tracks, they stumbled on the CIA cocaine drops. And the guys that were picking up the cocaine were the Saline County prosecutor, allegedly, and two Arkansas state troopers, according to the courier who drove the cocaine to Rockford, Illinois. That murder mystery has never been solved yet. And in that time, I've been targeted by these people, by this cartel, by Tom Meyer, by the top Democrats. And as you'll know and have learned in the uh, FBI memo, what this group of people do is they pr they're protected by the FBI because this all boils down to money. When you follow the money trail, it's all about the money. This Concord Commons here, is where the political money comes from for all the dirty votes. Like I say, they line up the buses here on election day. And on election day, all these people are at the mercy of their landlord, the dirty top Democrat in town, Tom Meyer. Tom Meyer died in 2014. I won't say bless his soul. I don't think he had one. But what I found out in the past six months is that the person who owns my house was a partner of Tom Meyer. And now here's how that went. In 2002, the real estate partner that Tom Meyer set me up with in 1979, who then ended up getting my building condemned, got picketed by the labor union, who my partner Bruno's dad was the treasurer of, See, it's, an, it's a cozy little system they got here, and it's all about the money. This is where all the money goes through. It's going to be used against the people here in town. It has been for 40 years. 40 years these guys have been running the show, and they're still in charge. Tom Meyer's son is the campaign manager to the current mayor of Rockford, Tom McNamara. Tom McNamara is named after Tom Meyer. And just to finish up here how the money trail works, I found out in the past six months that the guy that owns my house was the banker, or I should say he was the largest stockholder in the bank of the bank that mortgaged this property in 1978, October. Concord Commons never had to make a mortgage payment. You following me? Concord Commons never had to make a mortgage payment to Amcor Bank. At least up until 2000, when court records and depositions revealed what had happened. In 2000, there was a, there was a lawsuit where Concord Commons was sued because of a girl that had a pot of hot oil tip over on her. The attorney that sued Concord Commons, that sued Tom Meyer, ended up being my attorney in a lawsuit brought on by Tom Meyer's agent, Doug Bruno, in 2002. Larry Morrissey was that attorney. Larry Morrissey took my case in 2002. He fixed my case. He withheld the evidence, missed the, uh, missed the 213 disclosure deadline, which left me without evidence to prove up my case. In 2006, they ended up stealing half a million dollars from me. The agents of Tom Meyer, a judge, an attorney who were, who were law partners, Brian Larkin and Ron Perello. And then when Larry Morrissey became, a, became mayor, he turned me over to another attorney who ended up quitting a month before trial, and that's when I found out I had no evidence. 
So the dirty deeds that are done in this town are for a purpose. They're to keep the lid on the filthy people that are running Winnebago County, Rockford, Illinois, and as we've just found out, the FBI how and how, and how it protected the Clinton family and how it, how it tried to uh, tried to destroy Donald Trump, tried to frame him, who's the President of the United States right now, tried to frame the President of the United States. Do you see how little chance I had of, of fighting these guys here? I had very little chance of fighting them here because they have absolute control. In fact, in 2002 when I was sued by Doug Bruno, an agent of Tom Meyer, I went to the FBI because at that point I knew I was being defrauded. Okay, I'd, I'd only been paid back the $50,000 of the properties that we owned. We owned three properties together and they made three quarters of a million dollars in 25 years. I was only paid back the $50,000 which I invested by in 1983. I was the sole investor of our three properties. So that's why they took me to court in 2002 and ended up stealing all the profit from the 25 years which I was trying to recover in my counterclaim from Larry Morrissey that he filed. And when Larry Morrissey filed my counterclaim, he did a great job except then he, he did a secret thing on me. He filed another one secretively which took off the jury demand and changed everything so that I didn't get the jury that I that I that I asked for. So when his people then asked me later, after the whole thing was over, they ended up stealing two of my properties, ended up stealing half a million dollars from me. Larry Morrissey's assistant calls me for his father and tells me, "Hey, hey, we want to we want we want the rest of your property, man." That happened about three, four times until finally I told them, "I no longer wish to participate in your fraud." and I never got another call back. So there are ways out of this. <laughs> I luckily got one on that because I wasn't going to give them any more I wasn't going to give them any more money for what they had done to me. So before the lawsuit in 2002 I went to the FBI and I brought the stack of documents and showed them how Doug Bruno the 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 my real estate partner whose handler was Tom Meyer I took to the FBI, to the FBI agent named Casey Solana, here in Rockford. Took a stack of documents from the bank, and I told him that the banker at Bank One, Richard Bastian III, had taken my name off the account, taken my name off the checking account. That's how they were able to steal my money from 1990, 1992 to 2000. They had taken my name off all the records of the partnership account, of our real estate partnership. Went to the FBI, sat in front of Casey Solana. I thought, oh, this could be a good meeting. My old scoutmaster was an FBI agent. I grew up Mormon. And this seems like a long way from Salt Lake City, but trust me, it connects. Because the guy, the banker, who was the largest stockholder in Amcor Bank, Amcor Bank loaned the money for Tom Meyer. Never had to make a payment. The largest stockholder was my Mormon bishop, who later became a stake president in the Mormon Church and a general authority in the Mormon Church. His father is in line to be the president and prophet of the Mormon Church. His father was a CIA recruiter at BYU. Brigham Young University from 1970 to 1980 when they recruited more FBI and CIA agents than any other private college or public in the United States. The president of BYU then became a general authority, became an apostle. He'd never served a mission, he'd never been a bishop, never been a stake president, never been a mission president. He went straight from University of Chicago as a professor in law, Rockefeller University, right to the apostleship of the Mormon Church and next in line to be the next prophet of the Mormon Church. So as an apostle today, we just had Thomas B. Monson die a couple weeks ago. And Russell M. Nelson is the new 
prophet of the church. But here's the catch. People don't know that the corporate structure in the church puts the president as the sole beneficiary of the assets of the church. Right now, as the Mormon church sits, there is the possibility that if this, that if this father-in-law of the owner, the former owner of Concord, of the former owner of Amcor Bank that financed Concord Commons, the largest cocaine outlet in Winnebago County for 40 years, if this man gets hold of the presidency of the Mormon Church, he can sign over the assets of the billion dollars of the Mormon assets all across the country, can sign it all over to the New World Order, and the CIA, and Joseph Smith's work will all be in vain. Joseph Smith was the founder of Mormonism. He, he translated a book called the Book of Mormon. That Book of Mormon has one message, which is the the most predominant theme of the whole book, which is satanic secret combinations or conspiracies in the last days would attempt to take over America and the world. And they would do it through theft, deception, and what the Book of Mormon calls Gadianton robbers. These thieves and Satanists that Joseph Smith identified in 1830, right, or I should say 1829 when the book was first finished, that book foretold that these satanic secret conspirators would infiltrate government and his own church. I have been targeted by the son-in-law of the next in line for the head of the Mormon church who I believe is there to destroy the good people, the good Christians of the Mormon church. And I say this is a long way from Salt Lake City, but not that far from the history of the church, because the founder of Winnebago County was Stephen Mack. Stephen Mack was Joseph Smith's uncle. Joseph Smith's mother was Lucy Mack Smith. Her brother was Stephen Mack. Stephen Mack was a fur trader in the early 1800s, came here and founded Mack Town, which is up by Rockton, Illinois. He married an Indian princess named Hananiga, who the high school in Rockton, Illinois is currently named after. So I've been targeted for 40 years because at 12 years old, I was introduced to another apostle named Ezra Taft Benson at the Chicago Steakhouse at Wilmette, Illinois. When I was 12 years old, he told me to read a book called None Dare Call It Conspiracy. And he told me about the secret combinations that were going to take over the church and the government of the United States and the world if people let them. So I'm here to show you that for 40 years I've been fighting these bastards and I need some help. I need some help because they're a little bit they're a little bit above my pay grade. Although I did start a newspaper and fought them as long as I could, they're getting the upper hand on me right now. And as we know with yesterday and the FBI secret memo that the, the secret uh, memo that's been released, the congressional analysis of how the FBI has been converting justice for the past well, at least the past 2 or 3 years. But I can guarantee you, since my visit from the FBI in 2002, when I, when I showed them the evidence, I showed him the evidence and he, he looked me in the eye and he says there will not be an investigation. So I started writing down on my pad, there will not be an investigation. I said, why won't there be an investigation? He says, we protect the bank's rights, not yours. Let me say that again. Casey Solana, the FBI guy that I talked to in 2002, told me he was not going to investigate the fact that Richard Bastian III and Doug Bruno had taken my name off all the records of my, check, of my checking account from my real estate partnership. 
of which I was the sole owner and investor. So as I'm writing this down on the pad, he says, what you're writing down? I, he, I said, what you just told me. He said, there will, he said, he said, if I ever see that in writing, I'm not going to be very happy. So not only, not only would there not be an investigation to protect the criminals here involved in stealing half a million dollars from me and two of my properties, but he protects the bank's rights to, to steal from me. He told me he protects the bank's rights, not mine. And if I ever put it in writing, he wouldn't be very happy. Well, sorry, Casey, to make you unhappy today, but that's, that's just the way it goes. Because you guys are exposed now, and it's time that uh, the rest of America finds out why everything's been going to hell for as long as it has. And somehow, somehow, my own Mormon church, Deseret News, the spokesperson for the Mormon church, told everybody to vote for Hillary Clinton in this past election. So if you ask me, there's been an infiltration in the church because if I, a lone man, can find out what's going on, I'm sure the CIA would know that they're trafficking cocaine and have been for the past 40 years. And as we know, the higher-ups in the Mormon church are very well connected to the CIA, at least the bad ones. And it's about time that everybody learn what's going on. So one more point. That son-in-law of next in line to be Mormon president, prophet, he's the owner of my property now because these Mormon friends of mine stepped in to help me when the church, or I should say when the, uh, when the deep state stole half a million from me in court from 2002 to 2006, my church friends stepped in to help me out. The owner of the bank, son-in-law of the next prophet, could have loaned me the mortgage right there, but instead he had, a, he had his company buy it in secret and his, his, his team buy the property and promised to sell it back to me if I just bought six of their properties. See, as a banker, you get foreclosed properties and then his, and then his company ends up buying all these uh, foreclosed properties from the crack and cocaine problems and heroin in Rockford. It's causing all the real estate taxes to go sky high crime to go sky high and for Rockford, Illinois to be the most dangerous city in America. So right now, instead of selling that, my property back to me, a brownstone fourplex in downtown Rockford, oh yeah, Tom Meyer was the head of the downtown bullseye committee with Richard Bastion III at Bank One also. So one of the reasons I got really well, well targeted was because my property was downtown. And they knew at any time they could come in and do whatever they want to violate my rights in some way with the billing department and shut me down. Well, that's what's going on right now, and that's why I'm making this video. Because right now, these guys need to be exposed. There's a criminal cartel that is operating within the Mormon church locally here, and it's all about real estate. And I won't even talk about the sex clubs or the pedophilia. So I'm going to sign out right now. I can say I'm here in Rockford, Illinois. It's February 3rd, 2018. My name is John Beister. I'm a target of the Deep State, Deep Church Cocaine Cartel. And here I am exposing it. So do some research and find out uh, just exactly what I'm telling you is the truth. So I'm going to sign out. Thanks for listening.